Hey everyone, hope everyone's having a good day. Um, we're going to be throwing this content a little bit kind of back to what I used to do or have more videos on in the past. We're going to be doing some Nintendo Switch emulation. So today we're going to be taking a look at uh, Super Mario Odyssey running on the ROG Ally and the Steam Deck. We're going to be comparing the two, uh, optimized settings for both, and uh, touch overclocking for the Steam Deck to see if we can boost up that performance a bit. Um, as well, uh, in the spirit of kind of throwing it back to my older kind of videos or more original videos that I uploaded, um, I'm going to throw in some random Steam or whatever game codes. I think they're probably all for Steam, to be honest. Um, they're on Fanatical. I'll post otherwise if it's for a certain launcher. Um, but I'm not going to sparse them out throughout the video. I'm just going to do like, okay, here's a code here's a code kind of thing, whatever. Um, but I'm not gonna like do one individual letter throughout the video, it'll just be code pasted on the screen. So good luck to anybody trying for that. Uh, otherwise, we'll get into the video. Getting right into the settings, uh, if you haven't used Yuzu before, I'm using the latest early access Yuzu build, but honestly, the mainline build will work just the same because it's an older, decently optimized game. Um, so what you'll do is you can go and right click to configure for the specific game, um, and this is for the ROG Ally or a Windows based machine. Um, and then just honestly, just follow along with here. Don't change anything on CPU. It might be set to high on yours when you get it. Change that back down to normal for the graphics option sorry uh, CPU should be set to auto and then just follow along with the graphics and the advanced options there uh, there is an option that you can kind of play with and it's called um, my apologies it's uh, just above the fast GPU time hack that they have there it's the asynchronous uh, shader building Sometimes that can help with reducing stutters in certain games, um, but honestly, in my experience, playing through the first kind of three, four levels in Super Mario Odyssey, uh, it wasn't really stuttering that bad. Like when you first kind of got in, yes, it would stutter a bit, as like any kind of Nintendo Switch emulation does, some more than others. But it doesn't take that long at all to build up these shaders and you're getting a smooth, consistent gameplay experience. I was able to play at 18 watts on the ROG Ally and I was getting anywhere between 45 to 60 FPS. With the VRR screen, it was perfect. There was no slowdowns. I believe the slowdowns kick in at below 45 FPS, maybe 40 FPS. Um, but there might be a mod online, but I couldn't find like a list of mods specifically. Uh, as well, I'm running the base version. I didn't bother doing the update the DLC as I don't believe there was any meaningful performance tweaks at launch because it was pretty solid from what I remember on Nintendo Switch at launch so we're just doing base. Now moving over to the Steam Deck settings it's fairly similar settings with the exception that I turned on that async shader building. Um, I found that on Windows and Yuzu on Windows it'll sometimes kind of cause performance dips more so than it actually helps but on the Steam Deck it actually does seem to help. Uh, so we can turn that on here as well as the fast GPU time hack you can turn that on. Uh, typically you want to turn that off if you're using any type of like FPS mods or anything like that but these settings offered me the best performance on the Steam Deck and you'll see that the performance is actually fairly decent. All right so getting into everything um, I played the first kind of three, four worlds, and there wasn't too many issues playing on the ROG Ally or the Steam Deck. Now, what I did was pull a completed save offline uh, because, yeah, I'm not going to spend all the hours and hours and hours to get up to the points that I need to get to to check to make sure the things were working. So this is what we're left with is a completed 100% save. We're in New Donk City, the Metro Kingdom, and we're doing a benchmark loop that you'll be seeing in the background. So for this, uh, auto 15 watt 1080p on the RG Ally, we got 55.3, 36.6, and 25 for the average FPS, 1% uh, lows and 0.1% lows. That's the purple, orange, and red respectively. Now moving over to four gigabyte at the same wattage, we got 57.3 compared to the 55.3, and then we got 41.3 compared to 36, which is a pretty decent boost, but the significant boost was to the 0.1% lows here, going from 25 to 35. Now these are a three run average and uh, every run was a three run average. I uh, just wanted to state that as well. Now going into six gigabytes, which you're now able to do with the latest BIOS, we can see that that's actually negatively affecting our performance. And that's because emulation prefers the system RAM over the video RAM. It doesn't take much, at least in the case of Nintendo Switch, to output the graphical images that the Nintendo Switch does. It's not pushing like 
RTX or ray tracing or uh, frame gen or any like the latest kind of anything like that. So it's not it's not a difficult graphical image to emulate, but it's purely uh, CPU or processor load. So starving the CPU of the system memory and it's loading up more and more of the stuff in the system memory. So you're running out of that and then that's what's causing the slowdowns. So having it at four gigabytes uh, to auto or setting the best. Uh, so one, two, three, four gigabytes. Uh, five gigabytes you might be able to get away with, but honestly I wouldn't push it over four. Um, now moving on to the Steam Deck, we can't really play too much with uh, the respect of the VRAM and all that stuff. Um, but we got the 15 watt mode uh, maxed out. I'm not under or undervolting or underclocking or anything like that at this point. Uh, and we can see here that the best result we got was from four gigabyte SMT off. That was uh, 58.3. The first two runs, the one gigabyte and the four gigabyte were with a SMT on. Sorry, um, and because the four gigabyte three run average got us a better overall result, I decided to just okay SMT off for four gigabyte because that's the preferred. Uh, performance here it seems like so going with smt off is the way to go with this one um, you do get a better fps average but the one percent lows were curiously a little bit worse so kind of pick your poison here but it's still decently playable on the steam deck no doubt about it you get the gyro controls and everything it's it's perfect now going over to super mario odyssey again 20 watt obviously it's all super mario odyssey uh, back on the ROG Ally, we can see that uh, now we're pushing like almost 60 FPS average. Uh, those 1% lows, same thing though, going down to 6, 6 gigabyte and the auto, we were getting a little bit worse performance, but a lot worse performance on 6 gigabyte. 4 gigabyte being kind of the sweet spot here, so again, anything 1 through 4 should be good for you. Now going over to 25 watt, uh, again 1080p, all that, we are now getting 60 FPS averages for auto and 4 gigabyte. Uh, the 1% lows and the 0.1% lows are kind of closing in a little bit on the auto and the 4 gigabyte again, uh, with the 4 gigabyte being a touch higher. Now 6 gigabytes again, predictably we got worse performance, but we're still kind of getting up there now. Uh, but the 1% lows were completely abysmal. So, yeah, I wouldn't, honestly, I wouldn't go above 4 gigabytes when you're doing consistent emulation. I know it's a pain in the butt to have to switch back and forth, and especially if you do prefer 6 gigabytes for some of your AAA games, uh, you do have to go into the BIOS to do that specifically, so it's an extra step. Hopefully, uh, ASUS will update soon to the Armory Crate that you can do the all of the options through Armory Crate. You don't need to go into the BIOS to do it, hopefully sooner rather than later. But now going over to 30 watt on the ROG Ally, we can see that the difference between uh, 30 and 25, uh, not that great, honestly. Um, like we're getting a little bit better on, or quite a bit better on auto for 1% uh, lows, but the 0.1% lows didn't really change. The 1% load didn't change at all for uh, four gigabyte. But going to the six gigabyte, we got, uh, oh, sorry, 30 watts, uh, six gigabyte, we got, uh, a little bit better FPS average. The 1% lows were still uh, pretty abysmal comparatively. A little bit better, but pretty abysmal. Um, yeah, I honestly, again, just don't don't go above 4 gigabytes if you're doing Switch emulation. Now, for a little bit of fun, we overclocked the Steam Deck, and I do have a negative 25, 25, uh, 30 undervolt, and I did allow it to boost up to 2 gigahertz on the GPU and uh, 4 gigahertz on the CPU. Now, they would never reach those at the same time, but obviously they are allowed to boost higher than their stocks. So we can see here, 18 watts is where I just kind of put it. I wasn't using any of the JSOX fans or cooling or anything like that. I just had the mono block installed, but 18 watts was as far as I could push my Steam Deck stock anyway, so I just wanted to keep it as realistic as possible. Um, so we got a 58 FPS average. Uh, the 1% lows are actually quite a bit better uh, than the original Steam Deck run. So the uh, FPS average, if you'll try to remember the numbers, I'll kind of scooch through the uh, <laughs> to get back to the original results. But so 58, 25, 20, and then going over to Steam Deck, we got uh, 58, 22, 19. So the FPS average was the exact same, but the 1% lows were a little bit better. Um, not a lot, but a little bit. So if you are overclocking, yes, obviously there is some room for performance gains, but just don't expect it to be a night and day difference at all. 
uh, you'll get a little bit of extra performance, but a little bit more stability, a little bit less drops. But again, you're still doing Nintendo Switch emulation at the end of the day, so anytime there's a shader kind of loading or a new shader building, you're going to get a stutter regardless. So it's never going to likely be a perfect emulated experience unless you played through every aspect of the game once on your system and then replayed it again, then you would likely get the smoothest experience possible. But who wants to really do that? Now, I know a lot of people have been asking how to get motion controls working for the RG Ally. So you can use Handheld Companion and you can use the motion assistant uh, or the motion sensor system through there as long as you have the latest uh, Bosch sensor updates from Asus from their website. Now, all you have to do though is when you're going into like once you have everything set up on Handheld Companion, you have it turned on through the quick access or the quick tile menu. Then you go into the controller configuration settings for Yuzu, go to the uh, bottom, uh, just below the controller, there is a button to click there, and that's your motion kind of uh, control. So you can set that to a button if you want, if you prefer, if you want to set it to uh, a back button or something. Uh, but once you have the motion enabled through handheld companion, you can just shake your device and it'll pick it right up and it'll say steam you hook, whatever. Um, and then you're able to use your motion controls in game. Have fun. Now to close things off. Um, yeah, I mean, Super Mario Odyssey, it's a pretty darn good experience on the ally. You can get consistent 60 uh, with some drops here because of the shaders and stuff. But once your shaders are built up, the more you play, the smoother it will be. No doubt about it. This isn't like Tears of the Kingdom where there's a million little shaders for every new little thing you do. Uh, it's a pretty rudimentary game. Uh, some worlds are a little bit more lush than others. Uh, so you might have a little bit more slowdowns the initial time you load into a new world as I've kind of showing in the background here. Uh, now, if you want to play with the motion controls, I showed you how to do that with the handheld companion. So you can apply that to other games as well. Um, and you can apply that to your uh, AAA games or Steam games or whatever as well. You can set a button control. So if you want to only activate the motion control to emulate the right stick or the mouse uh, on a left trigger pull. So when you're playing a first person or third person shooter and you want that gyro aiming, uh, you can do that as well, which is super nice. But however, for the Switch emulation or like Wii U, I would just leave it as just being on all the time and then doing that. Now, just note that with Handheld Companion, I would not really recommend to have this on running in the background all the time. I would only have it open when you're using the motion controls specifically or something about that program specifically, because there is often times that it can break uh, controls when using it in conjunction with Armory Crate, I've found. Uh, that's my dog flicking her ears and shaking herself off, getting up into her bed in the background. I apologize. Now, with all that being said, um, if you need any help trying to get this to run, if it's not uh, performing up to your standards or how are you seeing in the video here, let me know in the comments and I'll re I'll, I always reply in the comments like I'm, yeah, I'm not going to ignore you. Uh, let me know or let me know if your performance is good as well. Like I always like to hear when people are getting and enjoying the game, like playing with good experience, uh, good performance. So let me know if you're getting a good performance as well. Um, but yeah, to wrap everything's up, uh, thanks again to my channel members, uh, Rustlin, Darkstar, Amoa, Rico1217, and Joey VR. You guys are phenomenal. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, and everyone that's watching the video as well. Don't, like, these guys aren't, like... I mean, they're the real OGs, right? That's their current level. But uh, they're not like, they don't get special priority over, like, they, they everyone gets my love and appreciation equally, yet, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so thanks again for taking the time to watch. Hopefully this video might help you. Um, I will do more emulation videos in the future, so drop your video uh, requests in the comments. I am going to do Xenoblade Chronicles 3 um, and a few others that people have requested over the times. Um, so keep an eye out for those. And I do like to go with some videos a little bit more into like, oh, okay, like why this setting is better or why that setting is better. Um, but yeah, this was just kind of like a quick and dirty. Here's Super Mario Odyssey if you just want to play it. Um, yeah, but beyond that, I hope everyone has a great day.